I still can't believe I had to shoot you, Jimmy. Now you are gone. I don't know what happened. You have broke your leg. You've become a useless fellow. You couldn't do your job anymore, so I had to shoot you. Please try and understand. But you won't be forgotten. To honor you and your legacy, I made this picture. Hey, buddy. Ready to record? Yeah, sure. Let me just put this on the wall real quick. Poor Jimmy. <laughs> Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and I'm Dennis the Buddymeister. And once a month we let all of our awesome patrons and YouTube members decide which movie we should review next. The last poll was all about Hindi classics. The options were Dobi Gazamin, Kagas Keful and Mughal El Azam and Kagas Keful won. The next poll is already up as well and because it has become kind of a tradition for us to watch and review a Rishi Kesh Mukherjee movie around Christmas time, our supporters can now choose between Ashirvad, Anardi and Anupama. Kagas Keful or Paper Flowers is a 1959 Hindi language romantic drama that was written by Abra Alvi and directed by Guru Dutt. Dutt also stars in the leading role alongside Vahida Rehman, Johnny Walker and Veena. The film was a box office bomb when it came out and it almost ruined Dutt's production studio, Guru Dutt Films. It was the last film he directed and he died 5 years later at the age of only 39. To this day, it's not known if his death has been a suicide or just an accidental overdose. But what he accomplished in his very short life is not only remarkable but seminal. He has directed 8 films in total and is regarded one of the best and most influential figures in Indian cinema. Paper Flowers was our second encounter with Guru Dutt. We have already watched and reviewed his second to last film Piyasa, which is regarded as his masterpiece. One reason why Kagas Keful bombed at the box office supposedly was that its heavy introspective theme, its self-reflexive nature, was something that people could not identify with at the time. Interestingly enough, that is also exactly what caused the film's resurgent in the 1980s. It's regarded as a cult classic since then. But I have to say that while I really liked some aspects of it, it unfortunately never hooked me completely. I love Piazza and its almost dreamlike poetic nature. But Paper Flowers mostly felt dated. The melodramatic elements are very striking and so is the comedic relief in form of Johnny Walker's character Rocky. There are quite a few similarities between Piazza and Kagas Keful. The most obvious one is the cast. Guru Dutt, Vahida Rehman and Johnny Walker are all in both movies and they play similar roles. And the story is also like-minded. Guru Dutt Suresh, a famous film director turned misunderstood and tormented artist, falls in love with Vahida Rehman's Shanti, a woman that we actually don't learn much about. Johnny Walker plays Rakesh aka Rocky, the brother of Suresh's wife Veena, who is reminiscent of Malasina's Mina and Piazza. And like you said, Johnny Walker is the comedic sidekick in this movie, just like his character Abdul Sattar in Piazza. It's very much a movie about filmmaking and life, about art and life, another clear similarity between the two movies. But as much as I wanted to love Paper Flowers, I just wasn't able to completely connect with it. This very introspective, or you could also say self-pitying story and how our protagonist was portrayed as this poor soul was just a little bit too much for me. And I hope that you see it differently. I really wish I would, but I think we're again on the same page here. Damn it, buddy. I mean, there are moments in this movie that are just pure cinematic art, where you can feel how much of an auteur and artist Guru Dutt was. But the weightiness of the story and how it is told with all the eccentric drama and the narrative leaps is... Yeah, it's hard to connect to. There's definitely a kinship to A Star is Born. Both are narratives about a successful artist who finds an unknown, who then becomes very beloved, all while the main protagonist gets into a downward spiral and is later forgotten by the public. Of course, the character of Shanti works a bit different and she herself turns her back on her career, but the narrative is quite familiar at this point. It must be noted that the film is considered to be very autobiographical. Not only is there a lot of Guru Dutt's own personality and struggle with the film world in his character Suresh, but also his discovery of Vahida Rehman's character and their love affair. It was in fact Guru Dutt who was very much responsible for launching Vahida Rehman's career. And it is said that they did indeed fall in love in real life, which contributed to the failure of Guru Dutt's marriage to Gita. There's definitely a strong meta element here, especially if you also consider that Gita Dutt worked as a playback singer in the film. 
So when we see Wahida Rehman's Shanti sing, the woman Guru Dutt was in love with, we hear the voice of Gita Dutt, the woman he was married to. And there is also this connection to the immensely popular and many times adapted story of Dev Das, which is also very much about a tragic hero who turns to alcohol and self-pity. It's also the story that Suresh, the director in this movie, is making and it of course very much resembles his own downward spiral. There are certainly some fascinating layers to this film. But let's get back to the beginning. Kagas Kifool is told via flashback. We witness how an old man that we don't know at that point enters a movie set, or rather a production studio. He revels in memories and all of a sudden the empty studio is filled with life and we know that we just entered the past. We get to know Suresh and Shanti and we also learn about his daughter Pami and that she's living with his estranged wife and her parents. Let me step in here. All the family drama with the in-laws who are so much against anything that has to do with the film world and who more or less hate Suresh it felt heavy-handed to me and I was never quite able to get involved in it that much. It felt quite artificial to me, to be honest, and it's part of what I call eccentric drama. Everything is so much out there with its big gestures and it is so emotionally charged. It's like trying a bit too hard to be epic, which it definitely is in many moments, but not always. It was also not that easy to simply accept that the daughter Pami basically destroys the lives of her father and his soulmate. I mean, she's probably, what, 13 or something? And maybe she hopes that her parents will fix their issues, but none of that is established enough. We know that Suresh and Veena are separated for many years at that point, and Pami probably was six or seven when they split up, so it's a bit incomprehensible how things go down. I totally agree, and I think that a lot of problems that this movie has, at least in my mind, are based on the pacing and the lack of establishing certain things. We are confronted with all these big moments and changes in Suresh's life, but we don't really get them because the movie doesn't take enough time to establish them. There are many narrative leaps in the story or ellipses where information is just withheld from us, like after Suresh's accident or after Pami's and Shanti's very emotional debate. We just pick up after that. Now of course you don't always need that information, but when it happens that often it really accelerates the plot in a way that leaves the viewer in the dark. And therefore less involved in the characters. Exactly. It also applies later, after Suresh's career went down the drain. He's gone. A few scenes later, Shanti's forced to come back. Another scene later, she stands at Suresh's doorstep to bring him back. It's very rough. I also think that Rocky is kind of a stumbling block with regards to the narrative. His only function seems to be to add some comedy, which more than once disrupts the main plot. But I also really adored his song about marriage and I was really entertained and almost enchanted by the whole sequence. The other songs were also quite wonderful. I loved Wagne Kia, Kia Hasin Sitam, apparently one of the most beloved Hindi film songs of all time. It's so emotional and full of passion and tragedy. And the scene with Suresh and Shanti's ghosts and the light that falls into the studio, it's absolutely beautiful. The cinematography by VK Murthy is outstanding. He's been called a revolutionary of his craft and as someone who was way ahead of his time. And this was also the first Indian film to be shot in CinemaScope, by the way. So you're finally taking over my trivia section, don't you? Just saying. Anyway, I think we both really wished we were more into Kagas Kefool. It's a good movie and you should definitely give it a try, especially if you are into older films. But I think it just didn't age that well, particularly if you compare it to other Hindi movies of the 1950s, for example, Avada or Piazza, of course. Yeah, all the things that we criticized earlier didn't destroy the film for me, but they definitely held it back from becoming something magical or deeply moving. It's a good film, I agree, but it just doesn't have the timeless and masterful quality of other classics. But it's also not a movie that made me want to tear the cinema apart and murder the director like the people in the movie. So what would we say in German about Kagas Kefool? Guru Dutt's letzter Film als Regisseur ist leider eine etwas halbgare Angelegenheit. Zuweilen wunderschön cineastisch und kraftvoll, aber immer wieder auch zu sprunghaft in der Erzählweise und überdramatisiert in der Charakterzeichnung. I give Kagas Kefool 7 out of 10. It's more like 6.5, but I don't do that. For me, it's also 7 out of 10. It's more like 6.8, but I don't do that either. Mr. Ayer, did you hear? I've got nothing more to add today. We already talked so much about the connection to Guru Dutt's private life. And I thought you were the gossip meister. <sighs> so, what are your thoughts about Kagas Kefool? Leave a comment. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. 
And you can hit me up on Twitter at TheBuddyMeister. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all we have to tell.